right so back back to work on the camber um, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out on the trails I haven't ridden it since about January after I got it um, it was really I don't want to say sketchy but <laughs> Uh, for sure, you know, it didn't, I didn't have the confidence riding this bike, I guess, the way I was used to riding my other bikes. I'm sure it was a lot to do with the tires. The tires that are on here are Maxxis Ardent, uh, 2.25 uh, in the back and 2.4 in the front. And yeah, I, I mean, I was washing out constantly. Uh, I had no grip. Um, I was really thinking, you know, with a full suspension 29er, I'd be able to just rip down the trails, you know. Um, I, I had to keep myself in check a lot because I didn't have the confidence that I had in my other bikes. Um, not only did I not have good grip, but the, the brakes were, that was another issue. The back brakes were really, you know, I'm sure it, it was fine as when I started riding it, but uh, once we got up to the, you know, the, the steeper parts and I was coming down, uh, I have had no back brake at all. I would press the rear brake and nothing, I could be you know, I would be pedaling, you know, just straight, holding it down, and it would barely slow me down. So I'm sure it was just a bleeding issue. Um, I did hear and I did read a lot of problems with the uh, Formula C1 brakes that came with these cambers. And I, I read that there was a lot of ish known issues, especially with the rear. Um, most of the times what I read was people just swapping out the brakes. You know, the, whoever they purchased their bikes from were just, you know, under warranty or something like that was specialized. They were just re putting on SLX uh, brakes instead of, you know, replacing or dealing with the formula. So that's what I'm doing too. Um, you know, I already had that planned anyway. Um, so I have uh, new brakes going in here. But the main thing that I really wanted to, you know, the one thing that I, that really bummed me out about this bike was the front fork. And not really, you know, it's an XC32, it's air, uh, 110 millimeter travel. But, you know, the fact that it still had the quick release, that, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> that was, you know, and if it wasn't for the great deal that I got on the bike, you know, that would have been the deal breaker if, you know, if I would have been paying, you know, anything close to what most people pay for these bikes, uh, that for sure, I would have passed on it like that. Um, so one of the things, and, you know, luckily, the reason that I didn't really, you know, put much consideration or I didn't weigh that as much was because I already had another fork. I had bought a RockShock uh, Recon. It was uh, Recon Gold. It was uh, 100 millimeter travel. I was trying to put it on another bike I have, my single speed. But uh, and I knew, you know, this my single speed. It's only a straight two. Uh, this one was a tapered uh, fork. Um, I was trying to get it to work. I figured it was going to be too much. You know, it wasn't going to be worth the hassle. But luckily, perfect timing, I ran across this deal. Uh, so the only thing holding me back, putting on that fork on this bike, was the fact that currently it's 110 millimeter travel. And my fork, replacement fork, was only 100 travel. So no way I was going to downgrade the travel, you know, go to 100 travel fork. So... I just modified it and I made it into a 120 travel fork. Uh, I took some videos of the process, some pictures. I'll be making another video about that and I'll be linking it on this one in case you're interested. Um, I did read some, 
you know, some people, there were some videos of, you know, people that were doing something similar, but I didn't see people doing it onto a recon, which this one's a 2013 model. And uh, based on the uh, 2014 manual, it's the same thing. So if you have a 2013, 2012, I don't know, you might want to check. Uh, but 2013, 2014, uh, Recon Gold, uh, then you can extend it just like I did. I went from 100 to 120. It's actually a little bit like 3 millimeters less than 120, so it's like 117, 118, but I'll take it. Best thing, 15 mil through axle. So that's what we want. Um, another thing, or another part that I had that I was trying to get onto my single speed was this wheel. I already had bought this, uh, you know, it's actually a WTV uh, frequency I-23 wheel. Uh, I'm getting rid of these stickers, I'm not, a, I'm not a sticker guy at all. It looks ugly, I think. I started on this side, that looks a lot better, I think, I, I, I hate stickers, yeah. So these are coming off, I just wanted to see what it would look like eventually, which I think it will look a lot better on this bike, these stickers would look horrible, I think. But it's a SRAM X9 hub, you know, meant for these 50 mil through axles, so both of these are going on this bike and uh, once once we're there then I can finish installing the uh, front brake that was the one thing holding me back if you had seen one of my other videos was that um, I didn't want to mount the front brake before actually having the new fork on there with, that way I can get the exact you know distance on the hose that I need so that I'm not having to deal with it being too long or too short um, that way I can have it just how I want it. Uh, so, now I just gotta put it on. It should only take me a few minutes. Uh, I've done this before. The main thing would just be depending on the, uh, the race on the, on the fork there. So, but I have ways of getting that on and off pretty easily. So, let's do it. Let's put this on and we'll get closer to getting this thing out on the trails again. So the plan is to get the stem out of the steer too. There's two bolts here plus the top cap bolt. Um, I want to try and leave everything else bolted on. I don't want to have to mess with that. I think I'll be fine. I should just be able to take these bolts off from the stem, lift it up while I put the or pull on the whole fork and wheel assembly, it should come right off. And then I'll just put the new fork and the new wheel on. So to kind of start it off, I'll just start by putting this fork on the wheel. Set it aside and four millimeter Allen is all I need to get these bolts off. So let's get started. With these, I like to also, you know, the theme here just loosen them up a little bit at a time. top cap bolt off, set that aside, and now 
I should just be able to pull this up like so. We'll set it aside. We'll take these spacers off. So loop these bearings up. That's it. This is a little side note, I guess, in case you were interested or wondering. Um, both of these setups just have the wheel, tire, and fork. No other parts, no other accessories. This one feels a lot lighter than this one for some reason. I don't have a scale. That's one thing I've kind of, you know, been, I guess I haven't really put much thought into it, but just going by feel, this is considerably lighter than this one. This one feels like, you know, <laughs> I need to use my, you know, muscles to hold it this one I can just flick around and I'm actually stronger in my right hand I think yeah this one is considerably heavier than this one so that's awesome I was thinking this Minion would be you know a little heavier which the tire itself might be heavier than this Ardent but overall I just lost quite a considerable amount I think I mean it's I could my arm is getting tired uh, so that's that's a big plus that's awesome okay so I removed the uh, old fork race from the old fork it was really easy you can see that little slit in there it makes you know these are the ones that come off really easily you just gotta really you know, push on them a little bit with the screwdriver or something, a flat surface. Um, if you, typically if you see the ones that, if you have the ones that don't have this slit, you'll have to pry it off with the screwdriver or something flat in the hammer. Uh, in my case, it just came right off, so it'll just drop right in. And I'm going to try and center this slit anyway, just make it look cleaner. So that's it. It's on there. Now I'll put a little bit of grease on there. And I typically use just regular, you know, automotive grease. That's what I have. That's what I use. That's what I have used. Haven't ever had any issues with, you know, <laughs> bad bearings or bearings going bad. So, um, but I just got this uh, Shram butter. It's meant f well. I used it for the fork, you know, the the pistons in there. Um, but I've heard you could use it for other things like like this. And it does look like it's a bit stickier than the uh, automotive grease that I've been using. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'll try it out. And if I have any issues with that, I'll, I'll be sure and update you guys. So now we'll just slide it up. I cleaned the bottom of that too. back on. Starting with the main bearing which I already greased as well. Well actually let me put a little more. the 
this goes back on there. Followed by the cap. And hopefully these spacers all go back in there. Looks like I will have to remove some though because it looks like the steerer tube is shorter than the original one. That's one thing I was kind of aware that I might have that issue with. But uh, if anything, it did seem, seem a little tall. So let's see how many, if I can just remove one, I'll be okay with that. spacers so unfortunately I did lose that length there. cat back on. I want to tighten that up first before I tighten up the two side bolts. That way I can get some, uh, you know, that way I can pull up on the bearing so that. Then the next thing after that is just aligning it up so that the front wheel and the fork and the stem and handlebar are all aligned. Which That's something I'll have to, you know, fine tune later. For now, this looks more than okay. So when I tighten this top bolt on, I want to make sure that this is still freely movable, like that. So that's good. And then I can tighten these up a little bit at a time. So that's it. All right, so I took it off. Uh, I was looking for some uh, through my, I guess, parts of, you know, extra parts I have. And I did find a thinner uh, headset spacer. Came with the set that I had uh, bought a while back ago. But it's a little thinner than this one. So I'll at least have something there. And I also found this nicer cap that I'll put on to replace the old one that was there. This was the original one. And this will be my new one. I do see an FSA logo on here, so... <laughs> this is what I have and this is what I'm going with. 